Morning. I'm going to try to do a simple, nothing really that simple, but a simple woodland scene with a stream going through a few rocks. I've done so many of these before and everything I'm going to say in watercolour I've really said over the last four years of being on YouTube. Uh, I like mystery in paintings, a bit of mood. I'm not a great one for detail or buildings. I spent a year doing Venice paintings or in late 1990s and I did quite well with them. Uh, but it's not my first love. I did it for money and uh, my first love was trees and skies and water. And watercolour is a very good medium for expressing mood. You can put the light in very quickly. Uh, I'm going to use two brushes the two inch Ron Ransom Hake was less, about inch and three quarters, 45 millimetres and a number three rigger if I need it and a couple of plastic cards, bits of, bits of little Barclay card, I don't know what that one was, uh, pay as you go, don't know what that is, anyway two, two cards just to scrape out some rocks, some small rocks, uh, I won't do any drawing, I'll just go straight in. It's Fabriano, 130 pounds. I don't think I neglect to mention it on all the paintings, but people still ask me what paper I'm using. So for those people that didn't hear it the first thousand times, uh, it's Fabriano, 130 pounds. I think it's uh, cold pressed paper. Buy it in blocks of 100 from Art Discount, Bentham's or Curtis Ward you can get it from. It's about £30 for, probably a bit more than that now, for a hundred sheets of it. It's good paper for wet and wet. Right, now I'm going to keep my, my one side slightly lighter than the rest. I want my light to come through this one. So woody scene, woodland scene, how to paint a, a simple woodland scene with a few rocks and a stream. So we'll put in some background sky, so a bit, bit of sienna. These are Cotman watercolours. A uh, bit of villager as well, why not? And I'll keep the lights on through the centre, I think. And then we can have some bit of blue, a bit of alizarin, a bit of sky, a bit of light red. Try to keep the bristles of it brushed together. They do separate. So let's just just get this in here. And a bit darker. Okay, we're a bit bit more in here and just keep these I'm gonna put I'll go superimpose trees over the, over all this. Right okay so we'll just, just just bring that over just a little bit more in that side. Right okay I'll give that a bit of a dry so headphones off or mute. Right, I won't do too much of the drying on that. I'll just re-clip the paper. No need to, re to stretch it before you paint. Just stretch it as you go. Look, it's nice and flat. Right, now I want some, some nice autumn well, colours. Uh, let's put some some background in here, a bit of sienna, a bit of lemon yellow. It's darker blue. Now some bit of bit of nice clean yellow. Okay, 
Okay. Right, now we'll put in some heavier autumn colours. So for that, a bit of burnt, burnt sienna and a bit of, bit of um, The water coming in through here, around there. Get your colours nice and thick when you're painting wet in wet because otherwise it'll just bleed into infinity and that's not what we want. We want some of the paint to actually stick. Okay. Right, so we've come in around there. Okay, so we'll leave that for a minute. We're just putting some more colour in the in here. Bit of alizarin, bit of yellows coming down here. This is all background. dark. I'm trying to keep the paints grey out of the dark for the moment. These are cotton and watercolours. If you want, if you can feel wealthy, you can um, use them straight from the tube and just wipe them off when you finish your painting. That way you'll get rich paint when you want it rather than scrubbing away at slightly dry paint. Just bring the side up a bit. This all dries lighter, so don't don't panic. Right, okay now, fingernail. So there we are, that's the background. And we re clip again. Right, okay, let's pull that one a little bit tight. So, a uh, bit of uh, rocky stuff now. Look, just very easy, overdo it. Good taste will tell you when to stop, and I haven't got a lot of that. So just it's just a little bit of bit of interest, look. A bit of some over here, we can, can get some nice. Great fun to do, and of course you can overdo it, and I love overdoing. So I'm just putting some some light bits of twig. We can use a a rigger to enhance the textures on these. Let's just pull those down here.
Okay, let's give that a bit of a dry now. Then we're going with the harder stuff. Headphones off. Now going to sort of centralise this this area of light. So um, the Sienna Ultra. So let's just get in some. It's bigger ones. Bigger. Well, I say bigger. They're thickened up a bit. It's amazing how far you can go with with the hake. It really is a lovely, lovely brush when you get used to it. It does take quite a time, but don't quit on it because quitters never win and winners never quit. And we'll just anchor that. The shadow. Okay, uh, a bit more blue in the next one. Let's be palette. Don't forget branches come up as well as go down. No, it's so easy. A gentle touch, but, but use blue to, to show depth. Look, because the blues will go backwards in the landscape. If you, put, if you paint them too warm, like too red or brown, you'll find that it will come forward and you'll put them in the background. So you want them to look as if they're in the background. Let's put in some bit of hit and miss here. So the light is central, so I mean on the, the right hand, slightly to the right. So let's put in some shadow side on these trees. A little bit of shadow cast. Okay, well, let's do some on the other side now. Well, no, we'll, we'll carry on with our blue over here. But a good colour now to use is is um, raw sienna and lemon yellow. They're a great light colour with the light sort of shining through them. So look. It's a bit heavy, so we just
All right, now we've just put some something in that background, just showing through. I'm making this up as I'm going along, really, but let's drag that down there. Okay, so we can put a little bit of darker burnt sienna in there. I love burnt sienna. It's my nice all colour. Right, now we go on to this other side now. Just put a bit of shadow in there. We need to put some in there as well. Not shadow, reflection. And then a little bit in there. Okay. I'm just going to make a shortcut for my dark on there. Right, let's get in some of this over here now. When the brush splits, just wet it with the tip and just work it together again and it will come back. If it doesn't come back then get a new brush. <coughs> just sticking up the, the, this trunk and putting the dark on the one side of the tree. I will do it, use a bit of rigour in a minute. Nice and dark this one. And the one coming across here. Probably this would be off the picture. Just harden up some of this now, put a bit of texture in. Okay, how's that looking? Right, here we go now. Then we can always put some, uh, a few leaves on the trees here and there. Right, uh, so some Bit of detail now. Just use a straight cut with a straight short shortcut with um, with a rigger. Just hold the rigger at the tip and Okay, that just gives a bit of 
details for them. Bit of shadow just being cast across across here. Okay. Just roughing it all up, just adding just some nice texture, just to give some interest in the foreground. All very simple stuff, using the edge of the brush. Let's just come across here, just a little bit of detail. Okay, I'm going to leave leave that. I might just put a little bit of bit of blue in there. Okay, uh, that's got a little bit harder than I'd, I'd hoped, but probably because I dried a bit too much there. But uh, let's get. So a um, bit of detail on here. Oops, right, moves me back up. So we can just come into there with some, just to connect the uh, dots, so to speak. Remember, we got all these bits sticking off the, off the trees. I won't put any ivy in. Don't think she'd like it. Okay, right, I'll dry the brush and then we'll put in some, some just some leaves. I'm looking at the leaves on my trees, out of my window, but I can see some buds. Or something, eh? There's still some leaves, leaves on them. Just a few hangers on. So we'll just put a bit of sienna. Just cover up some of that edge. Just a few, just on the ends of these. Okay, I'm going to let that go. I'll uh, sign it and put it in a mount and we'll have a little look. Right, put that on the top to hold it. I'll use the ivory mount and I forgot to do my tea again. There we are, a simple woodland scene, nothing difficult about that. 
It looks like I've done a lot. Let's just bring that mount down a bit further. But I haven't. I've edged out the rocks from the wet paints, but you've got to get it right. If the paint's too wet, it will just the paint will just run back. But it's just about right, and then I've just put the trees in with the edge of the hake and just added a few rigor strokes. And there we are. So one one stream, bit of atmosphere in it. I think I'll try that. Just a bit too fierce there, but but anyway. You're never quite sure how a washing wet watercolour is going to go. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye bye.